In this video, we're going to take a look at entering prepayments in Xero. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, or you need a reminder about what we mean by prepayments, you can check out this video here. But if it does make sense to you, let's head into Xero and we'll take a look at entering prepayments. Okay, let's head into the files section in Xero. And we're going to start by looking at a rent bill. So we have a bill, it's a quarterly bill for rent for January to March and it's £600. So we're going to start off by entering that bill. I'm going to say add to a new bill. So we're going to follow the same procedure for anything that's prepaid. So we're going to enter the bill as normal. So it's from Lovely Landlords. We've had to make some assumptions because obviously this is not a real bill. We've got the date of the transaction, we're going to say the 1st of January. We would expect to have an invoice number. We're going to put the description, which is rent January to March, and it's £600. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore the fact at this stage that it's prepaid, and I'm going to code it to the correct account. Now, I'm doing that for a reason. And the reason is, if I ever want to search for rent, for example, in future, I know I can go to this account and find my invoices. That's why I don't want to code it to prepayments at this stage. I'm going to put the full bill and I'm going to suggest you do that every time. You're going to start off by putting your full bill to the correct code. Now, I've already said, and you can see, it's not a proper invoice. So there might be VAT on this invoice. There might not be. So I'm going to say there is VAT. So Ignore the fact that it's £600, we're going to say the bill. The rent cost is £600 plus VAT and that is my bill ready to enter. So that is step one. If I go to profit and loss account, and let's just do that. And if we were to look at a profit and loss account for the month of January, we would see the full cost and clearly that is not right because this rent is for three months. So what we want to see is we want to see one month's cost in there and we want to prepay the rest. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go to the accounting menu. We're going to scroll down to advanced and we're going to pick up manual journals. If it wasn't there, we can go to advanced here and we find manual journals. If you don't have advisor status, you might not be able to find them there. So instead you go to accounting, you go to reports, you go to the search, you pick up the journal report, which you will have access to regardless of whether you're advisor or not. And then you can go to this add new journal. So that's where we want to get to. So I would be going to accounting, manual journals, and I'd be saying new journal. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put a narrative and we're going to say prepaid rent and we're going to put the period. We're going to put the month end date of the bill. So the bill was dated the 1st of January. So now we come to the end of January and we're choosing the month end date. The description will copy down from the narrative. And now what we want to do is we want to prepay the portion of it. So we have to think, okay, we're at the end of January, how much is prepaid? If we have a spreadsheet, if we have some sort of tracker, we can look at that, but this is quite straightforward. We know that two months are prepaid at the end of January. So we want to pick up the prepayment code and we're going to enter two months. This is a debit because it's an asset to the business. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the rent code and it's a credit 400. So that means we've dealt with the prepaid element at the end of January. Going to post. And if we go back to our profit and loss account for that period, now we can see the right figure rent of £200. But we're not finished. We need to go back to our manual journals again. And this time we're going to create what we call a repeating journal to deal with the prepayment. We're going to select new repeating journal and it's going to start the month after. So we're going to pick up, and all my journals, I always use the month end date. So we're going to pick up the 28th of February. We want this journal to repeat every month. Now this journal doesn't have to repeat for long because it's only three months rent. So we're going to want a journal for February 
and a journal for March. So the end date is going to be the 31st of March. I don't need to save it as a draft because I know exactly what I'm doing here. If you weren't sure you could, but I'm happy to go straight to say, I want this journal to be posted. This is just telling me we're past this date, so something's going to be entered at this stage, and that's fine. So I'll say okay, and I'm going to put the same narrative. And what I want every month is I want the rent code to be debited with £200, and I want the prepayment code to be credited with £200. So just to make that clear, we know that the month of January is fine. We've gone to the next month end, and we've said, from February onwards, we want to create a repeating journal. We only need to do it for two months and we want to debit rent and we want to credit prepayments. And once I'm happy with that, I can save. So no surprise, we're going to go back to the profit and loss account, but this time I'm going to choose March and I'm going to compare it with the two previous periods. And look what we have. We've got rent 200 in January, 200 in February, and 200 in March. And if we go and take a look at our balance sheet, so again we're going to choose March and we are going to choose the previous two months. There's not much in here because this is a demo company, but if we head down to the prepayments line, we can see January, two months rent was prepaid, February, one month was prepaid, and then when we get to the end of March, there's no prepayment. We've paid for the three months of the year, and we've expensed three months of the year. So that is our prepaid rent. No surprise, we're going to look at another example. So again, we're going to go to our files. Now we're going to take a look at the insurance. So this time we've got insurance for a vehicle and it's for a full year. So it's from July year one to June year two. So we're now going to do something similar with insurance. I'm going to go to the three dots and I'm going to say add this to a bill. Okay, so I've entered the details of my bill. Again, it's not a proper bill, so we've had to come up with some of the information. So it's from Impressive Insurance. The date of the bill we're going to say is the 1st of July. We would have an invoice number. We're going to put the description and it's always helpful to put the date when you're dealing with prepayments so that it's insurance for July 2022 to June 2023. It's £600. We're going to code it to insurance so we're ignoring the fact that there's a prepayment at this stage and we know that insurance is exempt and the total bill is £600 and I'm going to approve. So that's step one. The same as the rent, we're now going to go to step two which is the manual journal. I'm going to say a new journal and I'm going to say prepaid insurance. I'm going to date it the end of the month that we got the bill. So it's the 31st of July. And at the 31st of July, we need to work out what the prepayment is. So I'm going to choose the prepayment code. And if we didn't know how much it was, we know the total bill is £600. So it's not hard to work out. It's £50 per month. So when we get to the end of July, we want to expense one month. So we're going to prepay the further 11 months. If you couldn't work that out, you could put in here 50 times 11 and zero works it out for you. That's just a sneaky way to use the zero calculator. So prepayments is a debit because it's an asset in the business. Now we're going to pick up the insurance code and it's a credit because we're going to reduce that cost and I'm going to post. Before we do the next step, let's take a look at the profit and loss account again. So this time I want to look at July. It says compare with two months, but I'm only looking at the month of July. So now the month of July is correct. And if we click on that 50, we'll see what it's made up of. So we had the bill for £600 and then at the end of the month we said we want to prepay 550 of that. So 600 minus 550 gives us a cost for the month. Of 50 pounds. So that's stage two. I now need to go back to my manual journals. So it will be accounting manual journals. And step three is new repeating journal. So the first journal date is going to be the 31st of August. It's going to repeat every month and we want it to end on the 30th of June next year. Prepaid insurance to 30th June 2023. 
So what do I want this journal to do every month? I want to debit insurance with the cost for the month. We know that is 50. And then I want to reduce the prepayment. So I'm going to credit prepayments with the same amount. So just to run through that, I'm saying from the 31st of August, every month, end in June next year, I'm going to debit insurance and credit prepayments. Okay, let's do a quick summary. If we needed a reminder of what a prepayment is, it's an amount paid in advance of goods or services being received. So that makes sense for the rent and insurance. An expense paid in one period that relates to a future period. Again, that makes, makes sense. And we need to remember that a prepayment is an asset, which is why we saw it on our balance sheet. So let's summarise what we did with our prepayment. Step one is we entered the bill as normal and we coded it to the code that the expense related to. So we didn't code anything to prepayments. We coded one to rent and we coded one to insurance. Step two, we then created a manual journal and we created that manual journal at the end of the month that we entered these bills. So we went to the end of the month and we said, how much is prepaid at this date? So if you paid something completely in advance, you might have the full period of it prepaid. But in the two examples that we looked at, one month had to be expensed for the rent, two months were prepaid and for the insurance, 11 months were prepaid. So we debited prepayments, the asset in our balance sheet, and we credited the expense code. That was step two. Then we went to step three, which was create, and this is a clever bit, create a repeating journal in zero. So we went to zero, we went to the next month end, and then we said to zero, we want a repeating journal every month from now until the end of the period that this expense relates to. Every month we want to debit the expense code and we want to credit prepayments with the expense amount for that month. So that I think is the simplest way to enter prepayments in zero. Okay, we're going to assume that you've entered prepayments correctly, but it's also a good idea to keep track of them. So you want to make sure that your balance sheet figure for prepayments is correct. I would always recommend doing that and I would use a prepayment tracker. And I actually talk about that and a separate video coming soon, which you can check out here. I hope you find the video useful. If you need help with Zero, I also offer one-to-one -one coaching. If you look at the description below, you can get a link to my calendar. But until next time, happy zeroing.